Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to talk about the Mac Mini M1 and whether or not it's still worth it in 2022, 2023. Is it still a good purchase? Is it still good for the future? I have some thoughts on this topic and so I wanted to share them with you. So first of all, the thing you have to remember about the Mac Mini is that every year or every other year it gets upgraded. There are newer and newer models coming out and so you buy the Mac Mini M1 and boom, Apple has an event and it's Mac Mini M2 or something like that. But in this situation, where I would normally say just wait until the end of the year because Apple is probably gonna have one more event this year. This time around, I'm not gonna say that because I happen to believe that the Mac Mini M1 is still a very good purchase even if Apple releases the Mac Mini M2 this year. And the reason for that is the M2 isn't actually that much faster than the M1. And the M1, like I remember when it came out with the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, it was just such a game changer, the M1 CPU. Like it, it changed so much. Like I used to have an older model of the Mac mini before this one and it was so slow and it was so, and it was always so hot. And there was this fan inside that was just running all the time. And I couldn't actually make videos like this one with the computer still on. But now with the M1, this one is like dead silent. There is a fan in here, but I've never heard it even once. Okay. Even doing really heavy, 4k video editing which is very powerful stuff this thing handles it like a champ so for my money's worth i think that the mac mini m1 is very future proofed and it's even more future proof than uh, say a macbook air or a macbook pro because those have these batteries that are sort of soldered and it's very difficult to replace them with the mac mini like you're never gonna have that problem. The battery is never gonna be an issue because this one doesn't have batteries. Like it's connected straight to the power current. Like, so this thing will run as efficiently day one as in day 1000. So I think that the Mac mini M1 is still gonna be a very good machine for at least three or four more years, right? Like I think I will still be using this in like five years or so. I really do because it's very powerful. The only reason I might consider upgrading it is because I got the 256 gigabyte option and I really would like to have more space. This isn't really an issue because what I have connected here at all time is the Crucial X6, which is a portable SSD, four terabytes right here. So it's really not an issue. Now, if you only have a MacBook, I would urge you to get something with a bigger storage. Like if you're gonna get a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, just get like one terabyte off the gate because uh, you're not gonna wanna fiddle around with these things. But when you have like a stationary computer like the Mac Mini, it's not an issue. You really don't need to have uh, more than like 256 gigabytes of storage. Now the M1 CPU is like really efficient. It's very powerful, keeps everything cool and calm. I would also recommend getting 16 gigabytes of RAM because 16, it does a lot of difference when you have like a lot of apps on, like when you have, when you're doing video editing or if you're making music in GarageBand or something like that, extra RAM just always help. Like don't make the mistake. It's okay. It's very forgivable to make the mistake of buying a Mac mini with too little storage, but a MacBook with only eight gigabytes, it's gonna really hurt you in the end. So get 16 gigs. So yeah, in short, I happen to think that the Mac mini M1 is still a very good computer in 2022, 2023, and probably for the next couple of years. And I don't even care what the Mac mini M2 is gonna bring to the table because this machine is good enough. If there's something that I would complain about, it is the lack of an SD drive because I do have to use a dongle with a USB-C, so I have to connect it. It would really be nice to have a card reader put into this thing. But this is kind of interesting though, because if you look at the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 Pro Max and Ultra and the Mac Studio, they have built-in card readers, but those card readers aren't actually that fast. So I would recommend getting like a really fast card reader. This is a good one. This is from Satoshi and I highly recommend this. Okay, that's all for this little video. Hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.